Hey there, everybody. It's, uh, it's finally raining during the daytime, which is fantastic. Um, I'm down in the backwoods close to the property line at the moment, and I'm just kind of taking a wander in the back here and seeing how some of the structural changes to the drainage pathways have influenced the expression of water in this area and um, I'm pretty happy with what I've seen so far. I haven't made it all the way back yet but um, yeah this space is just uh, idyllic. It's like a forest garden inspiration album in a walk and so these little holding pools. Um, they are catching water from upslope. I'm sure that there are some places where it's close enough to the water table to express, but these look more like runoff pondlets than um, even a vernal spring because this water does go away in between rains depending on the weather and the time of year but um, this sort of pattern of pool and bank and bank and pool and bank and pool and bank and pool and bank is gorgeous and something that has gotten me thinking about some of the spaces that are more of a built environment than the naturally occurring one that we're looking to emulate. And so I'm back here just kind of looking at some of what's going on and thinking about how I can nudge spaces back here and spaces up top into slowing the water even further and putting it to the use, picked up a stick, um, putting it to the use of creating a place for even more That'll look good. Um, creating a space for even more plant life to hold this water and then to turn it into some more functional um, root exodus. And so all I've done is toss this little stick to hold down the bottom layer of leaves and then another set of leaves right there. And we're just gonna And that should help to slow that little bit of trickle. It's just the tiniest amount of movement now. That's much slower. You can see another instance and another instance and another instance of this pattern that we're influencing. And so, as some of you who have watched some of our other videos may be familiar with the drainage channel that we have coming from uh, the large pond. And so, in these moments, what we're, what we're doing is thinking about how these drainage channels and edge spaces function together to create these sorts of structures in the woods and how we can apply them to those built areas up top. And there's, there's quite a bit of flow actually coming under this log. If I, if I come over here, you can see a little rapids right up there. 
that itself is a little faster than I'd like. So um, I'm going to pause right here so that I can kind of get in there and uh, I'll be right back, folks. Give me a sec. Okay, we're back. I have put um, another log that I picked up that was just over here. Um, broke it up. There are different types of woods um, and some are a white rot kind of wood and some are a brown rot kind of wood. And the brown rot kind of wood tends to be um, a little bit spongier. I am blanking on some names for species that you should look for if you're looking to look for an example of them, but I'll make a note to um, add that in in editing here. Um, and so that little spot where we saw the huge amount of flow earlier has just been blocked up with about half of that log and you can see the water level behind it has risen a little bit. We have a little bit more flow around this circuitous path that has more interrupts and so the flow itself has gotten weaker, slower. We still have some more in here so I can take some of this and do that. But I figured we could take a little walk a little further down. See how this all is coming together. And, um, yeah. The pool here was definitely not as large before some of those interrupts were added up or down slope. So we're going to step across real quick. That guy, right there. That's a lot of movement in the water. And anything I place um, on the downhill side is likely to get swept away. So something that is woodier or bigger is going to be the thing to add. But as we um, as we travel down, it 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 gets very very much slower. Oh yeah, some of you may remember this structure where we were first talking about the um, the layout of crossing and then interjecting and then crossing um, to create that that pathway for water to slow. And even though it has that tremendous amount of speed up there that's exposing the tree root, um, it slows again as it comes down and it has to kind of meander its way through before it hits another large catchment structure and slows down again and then begins another set of run. And one of the nice add-on effects is that by slowing the water down, down here, even though I knew about this going up this way. Um, we're also seeing pools that are forming in other spaces now that the water egress has slowed again. And so there's this whole other channel here that leads out behind our next door neighbor's property. And you can see another tiny channel, but this all goes way, way back. Um, but you can see this, this uh, continued pattern of 
catchment and bank and catchment and bank and catchment and bank and catchment and bank and so now let's show you what I've been thinking about up top catch you in a minute we are back uh, closer to the house this is our drainage channel uh, when the pond which is over there overflows it comes this way through this seasonal creek and um, it comes up to the farmer's wall and then starts feeding the boggy low-lying area back here on our neighbor's property where we will split and we do take care of the blueberries and some of the raspberries and stuff back here and we're with his permission and understanding and knowledge and blessing planting plants on his property um, for a wider range of uh, genetics in the population out here as well as a reinforcement of the populations in here um, but also this guy is super nice and um, has has told us that the next time he cuts he'll like give us a heads up um, and he gave us that 160 yards a chip and so you know it's a it's a positive relationship that like many relationships has uh, occasional challenges but anyway we're talking about water so this is our seasonal creek it drains from the pond coming back to where we are standing here and uh, to our right is the food forest in a forest this is kind of our zone two but if I t pan down you can see that we have these same little holding pools that we're leaning into up here and at first this whole space um, because of the heaviness of the canopy behind and above us was very much devoid of some of the lower lying and lower trophic level plants um, and so this was almost a clean wash except for the handful of trees and so what we're doing is encouraging and leaving some of the leaves we have collected some as you can see to mound up against some of these roots and fallen trees that are blocking things um, but the other part of it was banking up the main entrance from this marshy part into the drainage channel and so with that you can see all of these leaves holding the water in place I'm gonna step still not too deep in here but my hope is that with each year and a focused intent, those will improve and we can harvest muck soil or dredge them occasionally if we choose um, to add fertile material to the other areas. But we'll start building up some of the soil fertility with things like rock dust or uh, the bun poop or hay from the ducks um, and the other portion of it is we are creating these islands like down in the woods um, functionally the same way that the woods create them which is by laying down carbon material um, in the woods when it's not us doing it it's really much more in the form of whole trees such as this which I hope will hold some water in this area here at some point and so um, there's this uh, methodology for water based or water harvesting and growing pairings um, one of them is a chinampa um, and another that a friend of the channel pointed out is the waru waru which is um, kind of mimicking that that pool of water 
mound of dirt, pool of water, mound of dirt, seasonally flooded, whether it's man irrigation or natural irrigation. And I think that this space here kind of calls for it. And so uh, I'd encourage you all, if you are undertaking similar projects, um, are there low-lying areas that you perceive to be substandard for growing things because of the amount of water that this space holds? Are there species that you can lean into, possibly from Ericaceae, um, Vaccinium, Willow or Salix, Elder or Sambucus, um, Alders or Pawpaws or any number of hydric species? Can you lean into those a little bit in a space like this? Can you find material locally that you can use to build up those artificial mounds that will then become both a walking space in between the seasonal pools and also a planting base on the edges depending on the water needs of the species you've selected. We're keen to hear your thoughts and how you're approaching these types of systems. Obviously, we are just in the beginning phases of implementing this, but I hope you can see what I see as far as the potential goes for holding and utilizing this water to improve the soil conditions below us, as well as the canopy quality above us and at eye level, something that will support a wider array of species. So, those are our thoughts. Apologize for the long video, but not really. It's been a while. So, yeah. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Happy planting. <laughs>